After spending over a week with the Snapdragon X Elite powered Asus VivoBook S15, I personally think that these chips are not what everybody is expecting them to be. Don't get me wrong, they are capable, they do deliver good battery life, but there is still a whole lot that these new Qualcomm chips leave to be desired. So in this video, I will be breaking down the hype and telling you exactly what these chips can and cannot do. And I will also tell you that whether these chips are really leaks better than the current x86 CPU architecture or not. So for this video, I will be comparing the x Elite powered Asus VivoBook S15 directly with the Intel Core Ultra 7 powered Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro. Now, one of the major things which almost everyone is praising about these chips is how snappy they are. And to that, I totally agree. My day-to-day -day tasks like opening and closing apps and switching tabs feel faster and more snappier on the X Elite VivoBook compared to the Ultra 7 Galaxy Book 4 Pro. And I believe I know why that is. You see, the memory speed on the Snapdragon X Elite is super fast. Moreover, and most importantly, the memory latency is also extremely low, lower even than the Apple's unified memory. But there's also an issue here. You see, VivoBook S15 is only available with 16 GB memory. Meanwhile, the Samsung over here can go all the way up to 32 GB. And anyone who has at least two brain cells to rub together will obviously choose more memory instead of more memory speed. Thankfully, unlike the memory, the storage is expandable as you can add another M.2 SSD in addition to the 1TB SSD on board very easily. And in terms of speed, it is not the fastest one but still lies somewhere in the middle of the PCIe Gen 4 SSD standards. Now, the snappy nature of the laptop is possible because the memory module is included in the CPU packet instead of being soldered on the motherboard, which is the case in the Core Ultra 7. Apart from that, the next big claim that the Snapdragon X Elite is making is similar performance while on power as well as on battery. So I tested these claims thoroughly. So firstly, I tested the Geekbench 6 and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro scored 13,088 and the Vivo Book scored 13,968 when plugged in. However, when on battery, the VivoBook S15 scored abysmally low at around 7,000 points. Meanwhile, the Book 4 Pro scored around 13,008 points. In Cinebench, the X Elite outperformed Intel Core Ultra 7 by a noticeable margin. Moreover, it scored well on battery as well as when plugged in. The Intel chip also performed well, doesn't matter if it was plugged in or was on battery. In Cinebench R23, however, the X Elite scored worse than the Intel Core Ultra 7, be it on battery power or when plugged in. When it comes to the GPU performance, the X Elite scored 19,526 in 3D Mark's Wildlife, while the Core Ultra 7 scored 22,962. And on battery life, the X Elite scored 19,240, while the Core Ultra 7 scored 20,074. Now, this indicates that the X Elite is able to deliver identical performance in both cases, but the Core Ultra 7 is losing some performance. Now, in terms of real world gaming, is where things get really interesting. Now, first off, only some of the games on my list worked on the X Elite, mainly because of compatibility issues. So, first off, we have the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In this, the X Elite scored 42 FPS on power and 41 FPS on battery. Meanwhile, the Core Ultra 7 scored 45 on power and 42 while running on battery. Next up, I tested Borderlands 3 and in this, the X Elite again scored 42 and 41 FPS on power and battery mode respectively. On the other hand, the Core Ultra 7 scored 62 FPS in both cases. Up next, I tested GTA 5 and the X Elite scored 60 FPS while being plugged in and when on battery. And the Core Ultra 7 scored 69 when on battery and 71 when plugged in. Lastly, I tested Civilization 6 and here X Elite really struggled, achieving only 27 FPS in battery and while plugged in. But the Core Ultra 7 scored an impressive 88 FPS when plugged in and 85 FPS when on battery. And since battery life is also a very big claim, so I tested that thoroughly as well. I ran a 20-hour video alongside Google Docs and Sheets and left it until the battery ran out. In the end, the Intel Core Ultra 7 lasted around 9.5 hours and the X Elite lasted 13.5 hours. 
Now, another noticeable change on the ViewBook S15 OLED comes in the form of the camera. Between these two laptops, the one on the S15 is much better compared to the one on the Galaxy Book 4 Pro. So this is how I look in the camera of the Asus VivoBook S15 which has the X Elite CPU and as you can see the quality in this case is much higher. Meanwhile here's how I look in the camera of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro which has the Intel Core Ultra 7 CPU and as you can see the quality over here is not as good. Now this difference in quality is because Qualcomm uses Spectra ISP which it also uses in Snapdragon powered smartphones like this OnePlus 12 which has Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now in terms of I.O. ports, on both these laptops you have all the necessary ports like an HDMI 2.1, USB Type A, USB Type C, a 3.5mm jack and an SD card slot as well. However, instead of Thunderbolt 4, you have USB 4. Now, while both offer similar features, the Thunderbolt 4 is objectively better. Now, when it comes to the build quality, I feel that the VivoBook S15 X Elite version is just built better than its Intel powered version. But I think that's, that's something which depends on the OEM and not the chip. Because the Galaxy 4 Pro is also built extremely well. Rest, the hinge is very smooth and can easily be opened by a single hand. Also, the flex is very minimal. Similarly, the keyboard is decent, but it could be better. And the touchpad is also very similar to the one on my personal laptop, the Strix G16, and is very precise. So overall, I have three-part conclusion when it comes to the new X Elite chip. First thing is that yes, it is fast, but any OEM providing these laptops need to have a higher RAM variant on offer as well, considering the memory is unupgradable. Secondly, these chips do provide a more snappier experience, good battery life and good performance. Doesn't matter if these are plugged in or not. But in order to have good performance in both cases, the app needs to be optimized for ARM. Because if it's an unoptimized app, then you'll see a small drop when plugged in and quite a noticeable performance drop when on battery. Now, thirdly, app compatibility for basic apps is present, but for many others, the support is not there. For example, a lot of games are downright not supported. Yet similarly, if you are a developer using apps with native x86 slash x64 assembly code, then you could face issues. But you see, the thing is that just like we saw in all these benchmarks, the Intel Core Ultra 7 is not too far behind in terms of performance and efficiency. It is behind in terms of battery life, but it has absolutely zero app compatibility issues. So Qualcomm, Microsoft and other OEMs did set out to make a MacBook killer and they succeeded in making just that. This device is a MacBook killer only, which is a very specialized device for a specialized use case, which does not include gaming. And unlike the x86 laptops that we already have nowadays, this is not a Swiss knife. Well, at least for now. So that was it for the review. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.